Headline Politics special presentation on CPAC. Live now for Conservatives getting set to gather here in Ottawa for their first caucus meeting since the election last month and a lot to talk about. Party leader Andrew Scheer will be facing some tough questions from caucus members today, even though he won the popular vote and added 26 more seats to Conservative ranks. And yet there's a widespread feeling in the party that it could and should have won government. And many blame Andrew Scheer's failure to be clear on uh, a couple of different fronts, on his personal views on same-sex marriage. He was asked repeatedly about that and uh, on abortion. And the inability to convince voters that Conservatives have a credible climate plan. Those uh, were largely the issues that voters identified as problems uh, that they had in terms of voting Conservatives. So a couple of things to watch for today as uh, successful and defeated candidates meet here in Ottawa. Will caucus members adopt a measure that's available to them that would allow just 25 of the 121 caucus members gathered today to trigger a leadership review even before the party members uh, will have that option at a convention uh, in April. And how will Andrew Scheer deal with these divisions in the party? What will he offer to, uh, to change, whether it's his own positions uh, or party policy or the people around him who advise him during the campaign? We've been hearing from Conservative MPs today as they arrive for caucus. Let me show you a, a shot outside this meeting room on Parliament Hill. Uh, we've seen a few people come and go. Uh, nobody has stopped at the cameras at this live shot just ahead of the meeting, but we're going to keep an eye on that. But we have been speaking to uh, Conservative members, Conservative uh, MPs, uh, some elected MPs, and those candidates who were defeated, uh, former MPs uh, and others in the, uh, in the recent election in October as they arrived on Parliament Hill today. So want to let you hear what they think about the importance of this meeting. We're going to show you what some of them had to say. Uh, let me just keep an eye on this, this shot first here as we see um, people coming down the hallways. Peter Kent, let's see if he stops to speak with reporters here. Let's listen in. Thank you very much. No. Any, Any advice to the leader? Any advice to the leader? Steady as we go, correct the course. And how, how does he do how that? How do you correct the course? We can't talk to you as you're walking backwards. Can you get back here, please? Afterwards. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Ontario Conservative MP Peter Kent, uh, you heard him say steady the course. He is uh, so far on the record as being a uh, backer of Andrew Scheer, saying it would be uh, a mistake to talk about replacing the leader now. I mean, they're going to talk about replacing the leader now, let's be clear, but uh, he's suggesting it would be a mistake to go that route. So we're going to keep our eye on uh, some of these arrivals as they arrive for this caucus meeting, but as uh, MPs arrived on Parliament Hill a little earlier today. We did catch up with some of them who are talking about Andrew Scheer's future, about the importance of this caucus meeting. Uh, let's listen to what they had to say. A lot of people are asking questions about Andrew Scheer's leadership. Should he stay? Should he go? What do you think? I think our caucus is very united behind Andrew Scheer. Absolutely. That's what I'm hearing. Um, there's a, a few media organizations reporting some anonymous sources. Uh, my conversations with colleagues overwhelmingly very supportive of the leader. And what about Peter McKay? Like, we're, we only reported what he said, and he talked about a stinking albatross hanging around his neck. Well, I think Peter McKay also said that he's supportive of Andrew. I think he was he was subsequently uh, quite clear about that. Um, I, I, I disagree with some of the things he said, certainly in his characterization of, uh, of the election as, uh, you know, an, a, an empty net. I mean, I think Every election is a competitive exercise in which both sides have a message, and um, so I, I, I don't think his characterizations are correct. Uh, but he's also been very clear that he's supportive of Andrew. And you believe him? Well, that's what he said, and I'll take him at his word, yeah. And so do you think Mr. Scheer has to change anything to win the next election? Because we're in a minority parliament. It could come sooner rather than later. Well, there's, there's a, a process of reviewing the campaign that every party goes through. Our party will go through that process. Uh, that process will be data-driven. It will look at the numbers, it will look at the information in terms of, of what happened, areas where we succeeded, and, and obviously we made substantial improvements in terms of our standing. Uh, but every party should go through a process of, of looking at the numbers of the information, and, uh, and that's a, a natural thing that, of course, our party will do as well. But some people call this, let me get out of the way, some people call, call this a winnable election because Mr. Trudeau was so weak. Why do you think it wasn't won? Well, I think you make the comparison to 2004, right? 2004, uh, Stephen Harper was running against Paul Martin. It was in the middle of the sponsorship scandal. There were many issues going on uh, there. Uh, the Liberal government had been uh, in place for 
uh, 10 years, and, and there's a clear sense of, of their tiredness. And, and it still took two steps for Stephen Harper, and he went on uh, to be obviously a very, very successful prime minister. So uh, that, was, uh, that was a first step, and it, and it led to uh, the, the further success we had in 2006. So uh, I think if you, if you look at that experience, I think uh, that's, that's, some, some, uh, that's a good point of reference for us coming out of the 2019 election. But also at that time, though, uh, Mr. Harper picked up 24 seats in Ontario. He went from two out of 24. You didn't have that momentum in Ontario, and you didn't have it in Quebec. Do you have any idea why? Well, we made substantial growth in many parts of the country. Uh, the, the, the growth is, is very much analogous. Maybe the, the growth happened more in certain places. I mean, we made significant gains in BC, obviously. We made some gains in Ontario. Obviously, we wanted to make further gains in Ontario. Uh, but, uh, but in terms of some of those specifics about, about that, look, we, we've got to do a detailed post-mortem process that's based on data, and every political party will, will do that, uh, and we'll look at ways to continue to grow from, from where we were. But what I'm getting here is that you definitely don't want to change the leader. Not a good thing to do. Well, I, I think it's very dangerous for organizations to always get into sort of the grass is always greener mode. Uh, Andrew is a, is a strong leader with strong support in caucus. And uh, you know we're going to have a member-driven process to to look at at all aspects of of, of what's happened. Uh, but I think Andrew will find strong support among the members, uh, among among uh, caucus, and uh, we need to focus on challenging Justin Trudeau. Uh, we're we're going to follow the Reform Act today, and we're going to we're going to follow that law and make sure that that the process is consistent with that law. In the last Parliament, Justin Trudeau didn't even follow that process. So we'll see if the Liberals have the courage to subject their leader uh, to the rules that are prescribed in the Parliament of Canada Act. Uh, and uh, I think you know, the cons our Conservative caucus wants to focus on challenging the government based on the issues that matter to Canadians, and we've got to maintain that focus. And how will you vote on the Chong leadership rule? Uh, I believe that uh, our party should be a member-driven organization, uh, and that means that it's up to the members to elect the leader, and there's a process of review uh, that involves the membership. Uh, I do not support uh, caucus overruling the members on that, those, those kinds of issues. So I'm glad the process exists for, for our caucus to go through and, and make those votes, uh, but I do not support us adopting a rule uh, whereby caucus would overrule the members. There's going to be a leadership review at our next convention, uh, and that's a member-driven process that I think respects uh, the grassroots, the people who, who are not elected members of parliament but are a critical part of our party. We need to make sure that, that, that we have that inclusive process as set out in our party constitution. Okay, super. Great. I want to ask you okay. one question. As Alberta MPs, are you going to be driving the same message that Premier Kenny has been driving towards the federal government about things like equalization, uh, energy, that sort of thing? Well, our, our focus is going to be on the issue of pipelines. Uh, I think uh, if, if you hear what Albertans have to say about these issues, the frustration they have is when you know we're, we're interested in contributing to Canada, um, but our ability to access international markets is, is blocked. So our core focus is going to be on that issue of energy infrastructure, uh, uh, among other issues that are important to the, to the province. Uh, and if we're able to move forward with those kinds of energy infrastructure projects, I think uh, you, you'd hear a lot less in terms of the other kinds of criticisms that you're hearing mm -hmm. now. All right, Alberta MP uh, Garnet Genist uh, arriving on Parliament Hill today, getting set for this big caucus meeting. I've uh, got a live shot for you here of the hallway. We can show you that. Uh, we are being told we will not see uh, the Conservative leader, Andrew Scheer, uh, arriving uh, here, but uh, there's Senator Kachuk, there's Marilyn Gladue. And now, most of them doing this as they arrive are simply uh, waving at the cameras and heading into the caucus meeting, which starts in about 20 minutes from now. We're told to expect it will go from 1 o'clock till about 5 o'clock this afternoon. Uh, we expect that uh, Andrew Scheer will address caucus members, but he's also expected to do a lot of listening today. He's going to hear from uh, successful candidates, but also losing candidates about what went wrong, uh, how the campaign affected uh, uh, their local chances, what was said along the campaign, and we expect he will take a fair amount of uh, criticism for uh, the way he dealt with some of these questions about uh, a woman's right to choose, about same-sex marriage, about the, the, the party's uh, climate plan. But y you can also expect behind uh, those closed doors, and we'll hear some of that later, we're expected to hear from Andrew Scheer at 5 o'clock, roughly Eastern time, at the end of the meeting. 
uh, after they go behind closed doors. But you can expect uh, that there will be a lot of praise for Andrew Scheer. Uh, let's be clear about what happened here. They did not win government when a lot of people thought the Conservatives should have against a weakened uh, Liberal uh, leader and a Liberal Prime Minister. Uh, but they did not. But they did add 26 seats. They won the popular vote. So a lot of Conservatives will say, look, this wasn't a blowout. This was a successful campaign. We thought we could have won. We didn't win. Lots of reasons to talk about that. Does that mean we need to uh, dump the leader and think about somebody new? So those are the kinds of things they'll be talking about at this caucus meeting today as members of uh, the caucus continue to make their way into this first meeting since the election campaign. A lot of this, of course, uh, the fate of Andrew Scheer, a lot of this uh, stemming at least in pointed form from comments made recently by the former leader of the uh, progressive conservative party, Peter McKay, who was at a forum in Washington where he talked in, in very explicit language, talked about the failure of the conservative campaign. And uh, a lot of people took that as straight on criticism uh, of Andrew Scheer from a man who has leadership ambitions himself, perhaps. And he uh, subsequently said that he was talking about the party campaign as a whole and not intending to single out Andrew Scheer and that as long as he's leader, Peter McKay supports him. But let me take you back to what Peter McKay had to say, which has led to a lot of speculation uh, about uh, whether Andrew Scheer should be replaced. Let's go back and hear some of those comments from Peter McKay. What I'm going to do is just ask you the question that everyone's thinking is, what exactly happened? Yeah, to use a good Canadian analogy, it was like having a breakaway on an open net and missing the net. <laughs> um, what went wrong? Well, I'm going to be very honest with you. I think there was a number of issues that became very prevalent in this election that nobody other than the politicos wanted to talk about. Mm -hmm. People did not want to talk about women's reproductive rights. They didn't want to talk about revisiting the issue of same-sex marriage. And yet that was thrust onto the agenda. Uh, and hung around Andrew Scheer's neck like a, a stinking albatross, quite frankly. And he wasn't able to deftly uh, deal with those issues when, when the opportunities arose. And I think among female voters in particular, and those who would have been impacted by any, any, any revisitation, uh, it created a, a nervousness, or it took them out of their comfort zone if they were considering voting conservative. On energy, Andrew Scheer actually presented what I think was a compelling idea, but didn't fill in the blanks of having, he called it an energy corridor, I'd call it a financial corridor that would span the country for communications purposes, for the purposes, yes, of transporting uh, bitumen from the oil sands in, uh, in, in Fort McMurray, but in Saskatchewan as well, to bring Canadian energy to Tidewater. But the issue really didn't catch on and it didn't really become a factor. Same with, with green technology. And while um, Andrew Scheer was pounded over the fact that he was late in producing a green plan for Canada, when he did, his idea, again, I felt had merit. It was, it's going to be technology, not taxes, that will help us tackle climate change, which I, I personally believe in. But how do we get there? And the answer is the, the previous reference, by transitioning from energy, of which Canada is a superpower. And even the United Nations has said it's going to probably be about 40 years before we transition away from fossil fuels. So, you know, and, and one of our former prime ministers famously said that elections are not a good idea, or not, not a time to have these important discussions. Well, <laughs> they are. But it's difficult, uh, you know, with the pace of information and certainly now with social media to get traction on some of these big issues. But that, that's part of the analysis of, I think, what went wrong in terms of Andrew Scheer's campaign. And I think at the end of the day, it was a bit of a Hobbesian's choice. I think Canadians were not enthusiastic, let's say, or inspired by either vision of either party. All right, that was Peter McKay uh, speaking uh, about the Conservative campaign, and that garnered a lot of attention and uh, questions about his leadership ambitions. Uh, let's listen as MPs make it into this all-important caucus meeting with Andrew Scheer, and let's listen to what they have to say. I know he's been reaching out to, uh, to members who were successful in the election and candidates who, uh, who didn't get the result they were looking for. Uh, he's making phone calls, been meeting with them, and we're caucusing today to, uh, to get a full airing from 
um, from all of uh, from all of our uh, all of our members. What and do you so, think he can do to improve things? What could he do to improve things? Well, that's what we're going to discuss today. So we're we're going to find out what worked well for uh, for members and uh, and what didn't work so well. And um, and I and I think that uh, Andrew said he's been he's committed to. Um, uh, to, to changing things up where changes need to be made. And what about you personally? Do you have the right to change the leader, or will you be voting against that? Oh well, that's that's up to that's a decision that caucus is going to make, and it'll be uh, and it'll be clear following the meeting. And what about you personally? What about you personally? Well, well, uh, you know, a Andrews had the opportunity to speak with uh, candidates who weren't successful, to speak with uh, members, and, and hear what they heard at the door. And so um, we're going to hear from him today that, based on that feedback, um, what he thinks needs to change. And uh, and I think that that's a great first step. Do you for want sure. him as your leader? Do you that needs to be that needs to stay here? Well, absolutely. Uh, a Andrew Shear is uh, he, he was elected in 2017, and uh, and we have a uh, we have a, he has a fresh mandate. He will unite our party. Um, anyone who wants to put their personal interests ahead of uh, ahead of um, the party is uh, is risking fracturing um, what we have today. And uh, we're we're ready uh, to to move on when uh, when Justin Trudeau. What about, is, uh, what, about what Peter McKay said? Thanks very what much. About what, thank you very much. All right, Michael uh, Barrett, representing a uh, Eastern Ontario riding uh, just outside of Ottawa, speaking uh, on his way in, endorsing. Andrew Shears, we watch a number of different uh, members of parliament uh, and some members of parliament, of course, some defeated candidates from the Conservatives as well, arriving for this caucus meeting. So just going to let you hear uh, this live, keep the live shot up, and we're just going to let you, put you there in this hallway as we arrive and see what uh, what some of these people have to say. Let's listen in. You'll have to ask him. No, but I'm asking you. You ran under him. Do you want to run under him uh, again? Well, during the campaign at the doors, uh, a lot of my constituents express concern about the leader. They continue to express concern in communication with my office, and so I'm glad to see that he's said he's going to go do a listening tour across the country, and we'll see what happens. What did they want him to change? What were they saying he should change, Mr. Leeper? That was Alberta MP Ron Leepert. Um, and you heard him, uh, Leipert, uh, talking about con concerns about uh, about what he was hearing from his constituents uh, about Andrew Shear's leadership. And we'll just uh, stay with some of these images here. And while we do that, we'll keep a, our, our camera shot on uh, this caucus hallway. Uh, again, we have been told that, uh, not to expect to see Andrew Shear enter uh, the caucus room uh, from this direction. So not sure we'll have a shot of the leader on his way in, but we will... Uh, continue to keep an eye on that hallway, and we will also let you hear from some of the other Conservative uh, caucus members we've been talking to today as they make their way to Parliament Hill for this meeting. So let's uh, let's listen to more what they have to say about this meeting, about the uh, which will consider uh, what happened in the campaign, what worked, what didn't, but it'll also have uh, a, a large measure of conversation around the continued leadership of uh, Andrew Shearer as the Conservative Party leader, as we watch uh, more people arriving. Uh, okay, this is this is Candace Bergen. Let's see if she stops at the cameras. Uh, she's heading for these cameras. What does the leader have to do to improve things in Quebec? Yes, yes, I do. I, I, I looked at the overall results, uh, and we, we won the popular vote. We won seats right across the country. We gained seats. Uh, we have a public Come on, with you. Uh, with you. With the yes. I'm, I actually believe very strongly in the grassroots deciding that, and so I, I will be voting for that grassroots deciding. Do you think any staff need to be let go? You know, I think that's a decision that will have to be made by, by the leader himself. Um, they're not my staff, obviously, so they'll be all sometimes changes are good. That smart changes have to happen, and uh, so we'll, I, I'm not—I I don't know what might need to happen on that front. Do you you say house I don't know. I, uh, I am at this point. I'm still house leader, so like we'll see. I would love to serve uh, not only our leader but our caucus in, in any way that uh, that the leader asks me to. Do you expect him to acknowledge some mistakes? 
I think Andrew's going to be very honest. He's a very direct, honest person, and I think that he absolutely will acknowledge where there were shortcomings. Why do you think we didn't win the election? Why do you think your party didn't win the election? Well, we won the popular vote, but the way uh, our electoral system is set up, you can win the popular vote, not necessarily win the most seats. And so that's exactly what happened. Um, I think we absolutely have an opportunity uh, at the next election to win, and that's what we're going to be working towards. Any other questions? All right. Do you think that can be so open to electing a leader with social conservative values? You know, I, I, I served um, for seven years in Stephen Harper's government, and I saw a leader, somebody with diverse views on, on issues, being able to govern and govern very effectively. And so I do believe that it can, can happen. Yeah. Uh, I, I, don't, I don't think that fundamentally, because Canadians have such diverse views on some, issues, some of these issues that are being talked about. So I think that the key is to communicate the support that we have for or women who are going through very difficult situations. I think we think we need to articulate more that we support as Conservatives healthy, strong, stable relationships, whether they be same-sex or heterosexual. That's what we fundamentally believe, and so if we do a better job of talking about that. And, and then I, I also will say two things. There is no doubt the Liberals have used these issues. They've used, them, used people and situations as pawns. And I think the media, and I understand why, but some of the media have played to that. And I think that there needs to be a lot of people looking in the mirror at, at how they've used these issues and not used this. Do you think that Canadians who are social conservative are happy to see a leader who is a view that's not usually represented? You know what? I, I We had a good swing, but our property is a ball. So, what can we do now? There is some observation that I will share with uh, my colleagues in the caucus. You know, now. And, what are um, the well, because we have to, uh, the caucus is, is the caucus, and I will, I will share my point of view with the member of the caucus. But at the door, did his social conservative views at the door in Quebec, was it a problem? Well, uh, as you know, if we, uh, if we had a perfect, uh, perfect, uh, how could I say that? If we had a perfect, uh, picture perfect, if we had a picture perfect, for sure we would, we would have won 78 riding in Quebec. It wasn't the case. So there is some issue to address, and I will talk but to that it, to the my uh, as, 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 as I said to you, I will address that where it belongs at the caucus. Are you behind Shear as leader? Well, because uh, yeah, the leader is the leader, and we will support the leader, and we uh, uh, we have to address some issue. We will speak about that to the caucus, and I'm sure the leader will address okay. those Mr. issues Mr. correctly. The, what I say to you, what I say to you is that the leader is the leader. We shall so we shall follow the leader, and we also know that the leader will have to fix some problem. If we had no problem, well, we would have been in a majority government, which is not the case. But do you want to run? Do you want to run under him again, Monsieur Delpel? Sorry. All right, Peter Van Dusen listening along with you. It's a bit, little chaotic here as these uh, MPs and defeated candidates make their way into this caucus meeting. There's Lisa Raid. She lost her seat outside the city of Toronto. Let's listen to what she has to say, but she's been supportive of Andrew Shear's leadership. Uh, let's listen. Ms. Raid, Corey tonight said the views on um, Mr. Shear's views on same-sex marriage, for example, could be fatal to the party's chances of winning a majority. Do you think he's got to do something about his views on same-sex marriage and on abortion. I think it's important for us to make sure that we take a look at the entire election. There were a number of issues that came up. Some of the ways in which they were addressed may not have been the optimum way that it happened. Clearly, I lost my seat, and I'm not thrilled with the fact that I'm not returning to Parliament. That being said, you can't make a decision like that in a matter of days. This is something that does have to be looked at very carefully, and today is a good jump-off point for the elected members. The people who won are going to be able to give their feedback. The people who lost gave their feedback to the leader already, and will continue to grow from there. But I, I would not... I would not purport to give any advice to the leader at this point in time as to what happened, what didn't happen, unless I, and until I understand every riding and what happened in the losing But it's riots. a minority parliament. You can study it to death. No, no, no. I don't think, we don't have the luxury of time, Susan, but we do have the luxury of getting it right. And I think coming out within 48 hours of an election and decreeing what was the number one issue and why it went bad, I don't think that was appropriate in terms of, of the right analysis. His analysis, that's fine. 
I think we should take a more thoughtful approach. And that's it starts today. What do you think about Sears' leadership? Do you think he should remain I'm leader? Fully or are you of the, I'm, for, I'm fully supportive of the leader. I'm fully supportive of the leader. That's a cleaner clip. I am. Um, <laughs> I stumbled first. I don't want anyone to think I'm stumbling. Um, I fully support the leader. I'm looking forward to his remarks today. And I've been very clear that I'm supportive of the leader. I think our party has a great opportunity in this minority parliament to hold them to account and build for the next election. And the optimum goal is to win the next election, whenever that may be. And you'd like to run under him? You'd like to run under him again? I don't know if you plan to run again. I'm Would literally you? packing offices, uh, packing boxes in my office today, and I'm not thinking about what happens in the next three years, Susan. So let me reflect with my family about what's going on. Oh my gosh, I did that twice, didn't <laughs> it's okay, I? It's okay. Oh, Julie, I'm so sorry. No, no, but I'm so glad to see you. My bad. Yeah. Well, it's good yeah, to see okay. you as well, yeah, too. Yeah. I guess so, I'm under a little stress yeah, today. Yeah, it's okay, but I, I don't know if you plan to run, but the point is, it's a minority parliament. Yeah. It could be an election like no, that. No, it's an excellent point, and I know me, my EDA is having these discussions. I'm joining the board of my EDA. I'm making sure that I'm still part of grassroots. I'm still in there. But to be honest, it's, it's pretty fresh. In terms of where I've I've uh, I've landed, I'm just wrapping up my office right now. I had to say goodbye to five fantastic staffers who don't have jobs right now, along with me. And you know, you got to look inward. I think it's very fair for for myself to have that point of reflection as well. And and that's what I'm going to do. And I'll chart my path. Looking forward to it. Do you though. think the caucus should have the right to replace the leader, or should it be membership only in terms of making that decision? I don't vote on that this time because yeah. I'm not a member of parliament. So we'll wait and see. But fundamentally, Pop the popcorn. I mean, you you made a choice last time. I mean, I made my choice last time that I felt that the grassroots organization is the best way in order to do a leadership review. And this is all new territory. It's a new bill. Uh, we had Stephen Harper as our leader until the last time. Andrew's our first new leader. So they're going to work it out in there today. We'll have to see. But any ideas how you can win more seats in Ontario? Well, we're going to have to figure that out because I want to win more seats in Ontario. But as I said, it's a building process. It comes with information coming in. We're gathering that information, then coming up with a plan, and that's what I expect to see. I want to see a plan. That's right. What's your role in there today? That's a great question. Um, I expect there's going to be people. I, my primary role is to greet okay, old thanks. colleagues, meet new colleagues in the Conservative Party, and say goodbye. That's what I'm going to do. Okay. Thanks, very thanks much. so much. Appreciate you stopping. Yeah, sorry about that, Julie. No, no, it's all good. It's all good. <laughs> All right, Peter Van Dusen watching along with you, uh, former deputy leader of the party, Lisa Raid, who lost her seat in Milton to a former Olympic uh, kayaker, Adam Van Couverden, for the Liberals. Uh, you heard her talk about what today's about for her, and you heard one of the questions there, and let me touch on that for just a moment about, do you think caucus should have the right to remove the leader? And that's one of the first orders of business that will happen in this caucus meeting today, is whether or not the Conservative Party for this parliament will uh, adopt uh, the Reform Act. And one of the provisions of that uh, in parties, when a new parliament uh, is formed, uh, each of the parties must consider how they want to deal with some of these measures about party operations and democratic reform within the parties in this Reform Act. And one of the provisions is uh, involves replacing the leader. So here's how it would work uh, when this gets considered today. Conservatives would first have to vote to adopt the measure uh, because they can refuse to accept the responsibility of firing the leader. That's, uh, they'll be asked to consider that. Do you want this responsibility? And if you do, okay, then there's the next step. And if they vote to adopt that caucus review measure, it could be triggered by a vote of at least 20% uh, of the caucus, so, or, or as little as 20% of the caucus. If they demand a, a leadership review, so in the case of the Conservatives, that would be at 25 MPs, uh, if they vote to adopt the measure uh, for caucus review, then the final step would be, if that vote passes, then all MPs would vote in a secret ballot, and if that vote's passed by the majority of MPs at the meeting today, the process begins to replace the leader, in this case, Andrew Scheer. So that's one of the things they'll be considering in this meeting today. And uh, you heard about expectations. Uh, we fully expect to hear Andrew Scheer talk about the campaign, what went well, what uh, didn't go so well. The results, uh, the positive sides, the negative sides, and then we expect that he will hear uh, from a lot of members of that caucus today about what they found, what they heard at the door, what didn't work about the campaign, why they won or lost, and some of the concerns they have about uh, the leader's performance in the campaign. And then we'll know by the end of today, roughly five o'clock, we're told, whether Andrew Scheer gets a a de facto vote of confidence from this caucus. In other words, they're not prepared to challenge his leadership 
uh, right now by that caucus review mechanism I talked about that he will stay on, but he will not escape a leadership review uh, at the party convention in April when members there will be asked, simple question, do you want a leadership review? And that question is asked after every uh, unsuccessful election campaign or when a leader steps down. So they'll be asked if they want a leadership review and they uh, will then pass judgment on whether or not uh, Conservatives will be looking for a new leader or whether uh, Andrew Scheer will remain in the job. So the caucus meeting, we're told, is uh, is underway now, and we can tell you that's a closed meeting, so we won't be seeing any images from there, but we still have some comments from people uh, to our cameras as they were making their way into the meeting. want to let you hear some of that as we can show you a final shot here, I think, from uh, the, the caucus hallway as most of the MPs now make their way in, uh, or defeated candidates make their way into uh, this door. Well, here's uh, Mark Strahl. He was the caucus whip in the last parliament. Let's listen to what he has to say. I remain uh, confident in him as leader of the Conservative Party, and I believe he will be the next Prime Minister of Canada. That hasn't changed for me. Your dad said I think it was time. caucus is going to decide on, on the Chong reform question of whether or not caucus should have the right to replace leaders. Well, I think the majority, uh, I don't know how the vote will go. We don't presuppose anything for me personally. Uh, I would say that uh, we have hundreds of thousands of members who participate in our leadership uh, processes and that our membership should make the decisions on who the leader is. Uh, 265,000 members voted in the last leadership race uh, and I think it would be, uh, it would be a little bit of... Uh, a little uh, hypocritical to have 120 people overturn the decision of 265,000. So I put my faith in the members of our party, the grassroots members who uh, who participated in the uh, in the leadership race. I don't think that uh, caucus should have the ability to uh, to change the decision of our members. What do you want to hear from Mr. Scheer today in the campaign? I think I want to hear an honest assessment of, of what happened. I think we need to celebrate uh, where we did well in my home province of British Columbia. We picked up seven seats, four of them women, many of them in suburban and urban areas. We need to look at that example and see why were we successful in urban and suburban uh, ridings in British Columbia and why didn't that happen in other parts of the country. So I think we need an honest assessment of, of what happened and, and a path forward. We need to hear um, the uh, processes that will be undertaken to ensure that a full and thorough review is done. And I think that is, uh, that is what I'm expecting to hear from Mr. Scheer. You, when you're a long time BC politician, in your view, why were you successful in suburban and urban Vancouver and were not able to replicate that in Toronto? The affordability message that we, uh, that we honed in on it was very popular in British Columbia. It's a very expensive place to live, and I think people... Uh, understood that we were a party that would lower the cost of living, bring down taxes, put more money in their pockets. So it was a very, a very popular, uh, popular platform plank and a theme, and I think it worked. Uh, Mr. Shear is very popular in British Columbia, and and so uh, again, uh, going from. Uh, look, I'm looking at my own numbers, and I'm, I'm not in an at-risk riding uh, right now, but my numbers were higher from 2011. So uh, the, the numbers in many parts of the country were like that. In other parts, they weren't as good as we needed them to be. So I think we need to, uh, we need to examine where we did well and see if we can apply those lessons uh, right across the country. That, I think... I think everything needs to be under review. I think uh, that we need to take our time to ensure that we find out if personnel changes need to be made. The leader's been clear that they will be made. But I don't think we need any knee-jerk reactions or firing people for the sake of firing people. Uh, we should fire people who deserve to be fired if they deserve to be fired. And I think a comprehensive review will uh, deter determine that for us. Thank you. Right, thanks. And the other was a wedding that I officiated that just happened to be between two men. Um, I think that our party needs to uh, address issues that have barriers of equality of, to equality of opportunity, such as the gay blood ban, the, uh, which I find is discriminatory, um, dealing with the issue of conversion therapy, uh, the fact that there are still disproportionate levels of violence and We are listening to Michelle Rempel now, the uh, Conservative Party's immigration critic. Uh, Alberta MP, as she gets set to head into this important caucus meeting today. A lot of the, his actions to the community have been largely symbolic. 
and it's something that I hear from my friends in the community, frankly, my family in the community. And um, I, I, I think in this parliament, I hope that one of the hallmarks of our party is being able to show the community that we support them, that we're going to be active and it's, it's celebratory champions of their rights, and hold Trudeau to account on these measures. And how do you think that is the director of communication of Stephen Harper, Sarah McIntyre, said, I will not remain in, the, in this party until our leader is able to march in a pride parade. What does it tell you about Look, I, 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 Okay, let's, let's, let's talk about pride parades, folks. Um, the reality is, is that every pride parade is managed by different groups. For example, in Calgary, uh, Calgary made a decision this year that no politicians were going to march in the pride parade. Uh, frankly, Toronto, um, you know, I have questions about some of the groups that come in, whether or not my values align with, like, like I'm not part, like, obviously I support community rights. Um, you know, I think that there are people who would say, oh, the public nudity I might have a bit of a problem with. Mm -hmm. To me, um, I have no problem actively coming out. I will say this right now. I support marriage equality. I support the rights of the community. They are my rights. We need to be actively championing them. I am proud to say that. I just think that the question of that is, it's, I don't want this to discussion to be around symbolism. If the community comes to me and says, you know what, it's really important that you march in this parade because it shows your support for X, Y, and Z issue, that's something I'm going to take to heart and, 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 and do. Um, but. I, I also think that you know where my leader has has had a point that maybe hasn't been communicated um, broadly, and where I support him in this is that we have to take action that is more than symbolism. So um, I don't think that the measure of one's actions are, are on on supporting the rights and removing barriers to equality of opportunity of minority groups should be whether or not simply you're marching in a parade. Um, I think that we also have to, as a party, come forward with concrete policy actions that are developed in coordination with the community so that we have a broader uh, positive policy conversation on these issues and that's something that I'm going to be proud to champion in this project. Do you think you're capable of doing that, of being the face of a party that goes beyond symbolism for the LGBT community? Is he, is he capable of being that leader? That is a great segue and that's what I'm going to go and evaluate right now. But do you know you. the answer? Thank if you, you. had to answer it now. All right, Peter Van Dusen watching along with you. Michelle Rempel, um, one of the many voices we have been hearing today at this uh, first caucus meeting of conservatives uh, following uh, the election results last month, uh, in many ways positive for conservatives. Uh, they won the popular vote. They added 26 seats, but many conservatives feel that that was an election they should have won, and they didn't win it. Many of them feel because of the performance of their leader, and he is going to hear that from some quarters today. But... Uh, watching along with you, I, I, I get the sense here um, that whatever happens behind those closed doors today, that you are not going to see um, a stand to be corrected, of course, by events as they unfold. But just based on what we've been hearing from most of these MPs um, or defeated candidates entering the caucus meeting today, is there does not seem to be an appetite to uh, exercise the harshest of measures uh, for Andrew Scheer at this meeting, which would be for this caucus right away uh, to take a position that they want to uh, they want to uh, move on from Andrew Shear as the leader of the party. They We will know exactly how they've dealt with this, but uh, this measure that would allow them at the beginning of a parliament as a party to say we are going to adopt this measure that allows the caucus to replace the leader based on, as I explained a little while ago, uh, a sort of three or four step uh, process that allows uh, the caucus to take a decision on the fate of the leader. Uh, it doesn't sound like that's where this caucus is headed today, that they are going to want to hear from Andrew Scheer, they're going to want to raise their concerns with Andrew Scheer, but by and large it sounds like if there's going to be a decision on the leader's fate, it should be left to the broader party membership at the convention that takes place in April, uh, not by MPs at this caucus meeting uh, uh, today in Ottawa on Parliament Hill. So uh, they have moved largely behind closed doors, but some of those MPs were still arriving in the last few minutes, and we had a chance to hear from them about their expectations uh, for the meeting. So let's uh, listen to uh, some more of what they had to say about the importance of this meeting today and what they want to hear. Well, do you think do you think the leader should move on? Will you do better in Quebec if you have a different leader? I don't. I don't think it's time for us to talk about if we have a good leader or a bad leader. I think we are here to uh, 
to, to, to do our job as MP. Uh, we were elected to represent our constituent, and that's this, this is what we will do. Uh, for the rest, uh, I think uh, just I'm so happy to, have, to be here to meet with my colleagues and uh, I want to talk with them about all the things. We will do, uh, uh, we will talk about the election, we will do it uh, between us and uh, we will do what it takes to uh, keep this uh, government accountable but for uh, his election and to respect his promises. When's a good time to talk about it? It's a minority parliament. If you don't talk about it now, when are you going to talk about it? <laughs> we will talk about it. We will talk about it. We always talk about it. And uh, we will continue to talk about it. And what is more important is that we have more MPs uh, to keep this government accountable to the Canadian, and we will do our job. I'm sorry I have to go. Okay. Okay, beaucoup de monde parle du leadership de M. Scheer. Est-ce que vous pensez qu'il y a quelque chose qu'il peut faire pour gagner plus de sièges au Québec? On va tous travailler ensemble, on va travailler un petit peu mieux à tous les niveaux, puis le prochain coup, on va réussir. Okay, so in English, though, you didn't win a lot of seats in Quebec. Is it one more? Let me, tell me, how many more? One? On a un de moins. Un de moins. Oui, okay, so on a dix happened? présentement. What happened? Ah, il y a eu toujours le jeu des des gens là, de, qui ont voté pour le bloc, là. le vote euh, MPD, il, il est descendu, puis ça l'a traversé sur le côté du bloc. Fait que, dans les luttes à quatre, ça fait une différence. But your former colleague, Peter McKay, said that his social conservative values were hanging around his neck like a stinking albatross. En français, j'ai aucune idée. So what do you make of that? Non, aujourd'hui, on est là pour travailler tous la, le monde ensemble pour euh, être à une opposition très, très forte. Puis on veut garder le gouvernement libéral sur haute surveillance pour les prochains it, mois. Merci. Ça va tout. Merci. Do you think Mr. Scheer should stay or leave? Mr. Scheer will have a leadership review in April, and the membership will decide whether or not Mr. Scheer should leave. He has my total support. So on okay. the Chong leadership thing, you're going to vote against He has my total support. Okay, super. A lot of people are talking about Andrew's, um, Andrew Shear's leadership. Do you oh, okay. want him to stay on in the next We just round? got back from, uh, you know, our time off after the election. Now we got to discuss what the agenda is for everybody going forward here, and, you know, we'll, uh, we'll see what comes, uh, comes from those meetings. What does your gut tell you? My gut tells me that we've got a lot in front of us here, no doubt about it. Okay. How do you think the Conservatives did during the election? How do you think their performance was overall? Well, uh, I know that we did well with the popular vote, uh, and we won my riding, which was... Uh, about where we thought we were going to win it um, and where the, the polls said we still had a pretty difficult fight in Calgary Centre, but uh, we great respect for my opponent and uh, I think uh, my team pulled off a good, uh, a good upset there, and if you can call it an upset. A lot of people are talking about Peter McKay's comments uh, that he made about social Yeah, I never saw those, so I was out of the country at that point in time, so uh, okay, well, I hope somebody actually does get... Uh, being like around the leader's neck like a, a stinking albatross. Like, did you yeah. hear what do you think of that? I didn't hear that, so I'll, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll hear those comments, uh, you know, at some point in time from my, uh, my, my colleagues or my, you know, my, uh, my friends, and we'll see what, uh, what comes of it. I, but I actually haven't seen that. Okay, so right now you're kind of open to Andrew Shear sticking around? Or Andrew Shear's sure? our party leader, and we've got to make sure that, uh, you know, we give that position all of its due at this point in time and make sure that we move forward accordingly. And how are you going to vote on the Chong votes? Well, the Chong votes, you know, I haven't seen the agenda of this, which ones are on the table right now, but we'll, uh, we'll see what those, uh, those, those motions bring forward. And I know there's going to be some good discussion around those motions, and we'll see how those come out too. I look forward to supporting him. I'm looking forward to getting to work here. Uh, yeah, the uh, Alberta needs, wants back into this country, and we're uh, working forward to that. Uh, holding Justin Trudeau's feet to the fire on that, for sure. But any concerns that, you know, the popular vote for Conservatives went down in Ontario and Quebec? Uh, well, I, I don't not, I'm not concerned about that at all at this point. Uh, I, work at, I'm, I represent Northern Alberta, and uh, Alberta wants in. Okay, now what, what will you say if there are folks in that caucus room that think that there should be a leadership review and perhaps the Conservatives need to go a different direction? Yeah, I... I, I would say I support Andrew Scheer. Uh, we, need, we need to ensure that now is not the time for a leadership race. Now is the time to hold Justin Trudeau's feet to the fire. Uh, we've got an extremely divided country, and we've got to work to put it back together. Do you think he has to do anything to improve your chances next time? You have to consider it's a minority parliament. You could be in an election sooner rather than later. 
Uh, I, th I think we ran a great campaign. We improved our seat count across the board. Uh, Andrew Shear is the only only leader that came out of this uh, ahead, and by all measures. Not uh, in Ontario. And so but... I'm uh, I'm looking forward to. Uh, to run it under his uh, leadership I, I've heard, once I've again. I've heard a different version where Trudeau was more well, vulnerable you hear, you than hear ever. Well, you hear a lot so of things. He was more so. vulnerable than ever, and the Conservatives could be the Liberals. That's the version that's, that I, I hear. That's what you're hearing. Lot. That's what you're hearing. I think that lives within the imagination of the media. And uh, I. Uh, well, the seat count, too. Uh, our, 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 seat count, our, seat count, our seat count's up uh, by 20, 20 some seats. Uh, we we up our popular vote. Uh, we have a strong in, united. In two provinces, though. We have a strong sure. united caucus. I'm uh, I'm looking forward to running under Andrew Shear's leadership. Do you think leadership. he has to do something different? Thing. What, what, are you, thing. what are you hoping to accomplish at the big caucus meeting now? Uh, well, you know what? Today, I just uh, I I think um, so. For me, anyways, I uh, I campaigned with my picture and also Andrew Shear's picture on my literature. The people in my riding like Andrew. I like Andrew. I have no issues with Andrew as leader. Uh, I do think it's important that we, the, the rule that is important to me is, is the rule about expelling caucus members. I think it's important that caucus ha have a say and I hope that all the parties uh, take that seriously because I think it's important that uh, people who are elected by their constituents are not unilaterally expelled by, by a single person. I think caucus should have a say. So to me that's the important part but uh, so you'll vote yeah. for that rule, but you support Andrew Shearer. Am that, I understanding? That is correct. That is correct. The well, big well, Andrew Shear is the leader of Conservative Party, and I fully support him as leader of Conservative Party. And uh, there is a process uh, in place uh, in terms of uh, a leadership review, uh, and that's a decision grassroots members will have to make. What do you make of the reports that say that there is a movement that would like to see different leadership? I would like to see Sheer voted out in the leadership well, review. Well, that's not my decision to make. But what, what, what do you think of the Well, what do you look, think of those I think what we're going to focus on is getting to work uh, to fulfill our role as uh, the, the largest official opposition uh, in Canadian history, uh, more than 120 members who are going to get to work, roll up our sleeves, and fulfill our responsibility to hold this government to account, and there is a lot to hold this government to account on. And do you, do yeah. you want him as your leader in the next uh, election? Look, uh, he is the leader, and I support him as the leader. Okay, super. Thanks. Hi, Mr. Singh. How are you? Good. How about you? Good. Uh, are you still running for caucus chair? I am. Do you think you'll win it? I uh, won't speculate on that. We're all friends, and uh, my, my colleagues will make their decision, and I'll uh, be happy with whatever decision they make. And how are you voting on the power on whether to give caucus powers? And, and over well, that leader? would be a caucus decision, and I think uh, I would uh, leave that to the caucus confidence. But you won't tell us your own personal opinion? Uh, no, I, no I, first off, I'm, I want to go in and hear all the debate on the issue, and, and then uh, I'll make my decision. What have you been hearing about the leader overall? What feedback have you gotten after the election? Listen, I have full confidence in our leader, and uh, that's all I've heard. Should he stay on until the next election? I think you should, absolutely. Is it, is it fair to have a vote in caucus, or do you think the, mil the, 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 the militant? Do, is it fair to have a vote on the leadership in caucus, or do you feel that it should be decided? No, I think that's, a, like I said, I think that's a decision of caucus confidence, and I'll just keep that to myself. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right, MP David Sweet. Now, uh, you heard a number of different questions there about this issue of caucus review, and let me just uh, finish our uh, our time together on that uh, so that we know what's happening behind closed doors now as the caucus meeting is underway on Parliament Hill with the Conservatives and that is this issue of caucus review and uh, measures uh, under uh, the law now the uh, the uh, Reform Act which allows uh, at the beginning of a parliament parties to adopt measures uh, that would allow caucus to uh, basically uh, dump the leader but you have to agree to accept the measures and then you can apply the measures if you choose to. You can choose not to accept the measures. You can actually say as a caucus, no, we don't want the right for the caucus to be able to dump the leader, so we're not going to exercise that right. We're not going to adopt uh, that policy. If they do decide to adopt the policy, then what would happen, and it seems like a long shot given what we've heard from uh, all of the Conservatives entering the uh, caucus meeting today it would seem like a long shot that uh, they are actually going to uh, move to uh, get rid of Andrew Scheer today to start a leadership process. doesn't sound like that at all. There's still the possibility they would adopt this measure but not exercise the measure today. They, they would have that as one of the options they could use at any point in, in the sitting of the Parliament. 
they could move uh, to uh, to uh, replace the leader. So how would that work? How would that caucus review work? Well, in the case of the caucus meeting today, conservatives would, as I say, first have to vote to adopt the measure because they can refuse to accept the responsibility of firing the leader. So first they would have to say, yes, we want it. If they vote to adopt that caucus review measure, it would uh, it could be triggered, that measure could be then triggered by a vote of at least 20% of the caucus uh, demanding a leadership review. So in the case of the Conservatives and their vote count, that would be 25 MPs uh, would have to vote at the caucus meeting today, if it were to happen today, uh, that they would like a uh, leadership review. They would have to ask for that process to take place. If that vote if that happens, if there's 25 members who say we want to exercise that right today, then all MPs would then vote at this meeting in a secret ballot. And if that vote is passed by the majority, then the process begins to replace the leader. So they could, I suppose, look at, they could decide to uh, adopt the measure. Then 25 MPs could say we want to trigger this process and then they could vote to vote it down. So it would go no further than that. But it would be interesting to have note, uh, to have noted by the end of this meeting today that 20% of that caucus has some serious concerns about Andrew Scheer's leadership and wanted to move down that road. Uh, based on what we've heard going into the meeting, uh, I'll be surprised if that's what we've, we hear. It sounds like uh, at the very most what we might hear is members voting to adopt the review process, the caucus review process, but then not exercising it and leaving Andrew Scheer's fate to the party convention in April and leave that to the general membership and not to the elected members of caucus, 121 of them now on Parliament Hill, uh, leave that decision about Andrew Shear's fate to them. So caucus meeting underway. We are told the next uh, time we will hear uh, and we expect to hear from Andrew Shear, and that will be after the caucus meeting today. Uh, it's supposed to end at 5 o'clock. It could end earlier than that. As soon as it does end, we'll have live coverage for you uh, about what happened at this caucus meeting and uh, what Conservatives have decided about the leadership of Andrew Scheer. That's our live coverage for now. Back to regular programming.